Hello, what we're going to do right now is talk about non-parametric tests. We've already had an introduction to the idea of a hypothesis test, but now we're going to more formally uh, show how to conduct um, a non-parametric hypothesis test. I'm going to start by listing some terms. And then I will, after that, um, go through um, a couple examples that'll make it more clear what we're actually doing when we conduct um, this type of test. So as we've already said, any hypothesis test is a proof by contradiction. That means that you make some initial assumption, you see what that assumption implies, and if what that assumption implies couldn't possibly be true or seems very unlikely to be true, then maybe your initial assumption is not true. So the initial assumption in a hypothesis test is called the null hypothesis. And we typically notate that H naught, okay, it's got a little um, zero there. I'm gonna spell that for you so you can see what that word is, H naught. Okay. And that is the baseline assumption. It's the assumption you begin with, and it's typically the assumption that there's no effect or no pattern. Typically that there is no effect or no pattern. So once we make that assumption, how do we decide um, what, what, whether it seems possibly true for this case? Well, we need some way to summarize the data. In general, a statistic is a number that you can calculate based on data. Okay, so it's a number that you know if you have a data set. And this term statistic is not specific to hypothesis tests. Anytime you're talking about a number that can be calculated from data, that is called a statistic. Examples of statistics are means, medians, differences in means, ratio of means, ratios of medians, maxima, minima, 75th percentiles, right? Ratio of 75 percentiles in two groups. Anything you could actually calculate from your data um, is a statistic. And so then the next term we'll define is test statistic, which of course is a statistic that you use for your hypothesis test. In particular, it's the statistic that you choose, the statistic used to evaluate your null hypothesis. All right, so this is the general setup. You make some initial assumption, you decide what statistic you're going to use, how you're going to um, summarize the data, okay? And then the next definition here is distribution. So just in general, um, this is a probability idea, distribution is a list of possible values of a random numeric quantity along with their probabilities. So for any random quantity, it's a list of all the numbers that quantity could be equal to along with their probabilities. So to give you one example that I know is familiar, what if we roll a die, right? If we roll a die, you know what the possible numbers are, right? So rolling a die gives you a number that's a random quantity because you might get something else if you roll the die again. And the possible choices are one, two, three, four, five, and six. But this is not a distribution yet. This is just a list of the possible values, right? This is the first part of the definition, a list of possible values of a random numeric quantity. I just wrote down the numbers one through six, but it's not a distribution until I also write down their probabilities. So for example, if I roll a die, the probability I get a one is one sixth and the probability I get a two is one sixth. And actually the probability I get each of the numbers is one sixth. And that now that whole thing is the distribution of um, the value that comes up when you roll a die. Um, suppose I flipped a coin and if I get heads, call it one. If I get tails, call it zero. Then the distribution would be a list of the possible outcomes, which are one and zero, along with their probabilities, which are one half and one half. That's what a distribution is. 
So now that we know what a distribution is, let's define one more term before we do an example. And that term is reference distribution. Just like we first defined statistic and said that a test statistic is a statistic we use for our test, we first define distribution and distribution, reference distribution is a distribution um, we'll need for our test. So in particular, the reference distribution is the distribution of the test statistic. And then crucially, assuming that our null hypothesis is true. Okay, so we'll again look at an example in a moment, but just to pause and think about what this means. Under the assumption that a null hypothesis is true, we're going to find the distribution of the test statistic. In other words, we're going to list all the possible values of the test statistic along with their probabilities.